Hey, welcome to Well.com, home of TIG time. Hi, I'm Mr. TIG, and today we had a project brought to us that looked like a weld repair. In fact, uh, this is a swing arm uh, off of a, a competition bicycle, and it's a mountain bike. Uh, Paul, uh, you asked us to take a look at this and see if it was weldable. You thought it might be a 7000 series aluminum, and 7000, of course, is a very, very strong aluminum. But I can tell you this, uh, it probably is not, and I'll tell you why. When I look at this structure, it's a weldment type structure, and you can see a considerable amount of welding, uh, you know, a lot of detail in it, and a lot of very fine welding. Now, I think what has happened is this thing's been put into service for 12 or 14 years, and it's just got the heck beat out of it. And you can see, you can see scratch marks and, and marks where it's hit rocks, and it's got dents and everything else just as you would expect. So, uh, Paul, I understand that you can't get a replacement part just because of the age of the bike. So what we're going to do is um, we're going to take a look at this, and, and I believe I believe that this bike is probably uh, some type of an aluminum, um, more in the 6000 series. Uh, I don't think it's a 5000 series. I think it's 6000 only because that's about the highest strength you can get, you know, uh, before getting into the 7000 non-weldable series. So uh, I don't think it's a 7000 or 8000 series. Now here's the choice and we've gone through this selection process many many times. Uh, the cracks are pretty significant. Uh, the cracks are in the wells and is migrated into the parent material. So we have to take a look at this and, and know that we're only going to use maybe 50 to 75 amps on this. Well, 50 to 75 amps. Now let's pick the, the filler selection because that's always an issue. This is an unknown alloy. We know that it's weldable. Uh, probably very highly likely that it's a 6000 series. Now, what are the best properties uh, for this? So the best properties are probably going to be out of the 53, 56 filler. And again, we, we take the choice between 40, 43 and 53, 56. The 4043 is actually an easier filler to use, and it's less crack sensitive. But when you look at the application of this bike, it needs the properties to survive. When I say properties, better tensile properties, flexibility, things like that. From a weldability standpoint, uh, 4043 is better, uh, just slightly better than the 5356. So overall, the choice is. 53.56. So let's let's try it. Now I'm going to have to I'm going to have to identify the crack itself. So I'm going to I'm going to follow this. And originally it looked like it was only on one side, but uh, we wiped off all the dirt, and lo and behold, the other side is cracked as well. So I'm going to go ahead and get this paint or powder coat or whatever it is on here. Uh, I'm going to put a little groove just so I can see where the cracks are. Uh, and I may have to use a couple of different tools, one of them being, uh, you know, kind of a, a, a fine grinding bit for aluminum. I'm, I'm not going to use the aggressive bit because it just is too thin of material. Normally I'd, I'd grind in with something like this. Now I also have, have a little Dremel, you know, and this abrasive wheel will help me kind of put a groove in there and, and we'll just we'll see what I can reach with each of these. So I may be changing back and forth and, and ultimately I may go in with my real fine bit just to finally identify a little groove in here just prior to welding. So uh, let me get my safety gear on and I'll, I'll just start prepping. Okay, so here was the procedure. Once I got into it, uh, I, I found the cracks. I went ahead and I put a little slot with this little Dremel uh, wheel. Uh, <clears throat> put a slot in there. It's kind of a square slot. So I made sure that it was deep enough that I could see it under the hood. So then what I did was I came along with this, and this one is just a little deburring tool, and it kind of rounded out the slot. So when I go to weld aluminum, aluminum has such a problem wetting out nicely, it's better to have a rounded out bottom. So that's what I did, is I just followed it through, and it's pretty significant. I mean, uh, one of these is almost all the way around, and the other one, it, it cracked, and it probably 50%. So uh, you'll probably notice that I used both of these tools to get rid of the paint or powder coating. I couldn't tell exactly what it was, but just lightly 
uh, scrape the top. And then you can come back with this. You can do the same thing, you just can't cover as much material with it. So, you know, I went ahead and rounded it, and then sometimes I picked up a few contaminants, and you just do that motion. So it, it ground out very nicely. I got rid of the paint very nicely. Uh, fortunately, I didn't have to go to anything more severe like this. So I'm, I'm pretty well good to go. Now, the only thing I'm going to do right now is I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to wipe this thing. And this is nice isopropyl alcohol, so uh, it's just not a problem at all. I'll just wipe off all the residual. Doesn't take long at all. And you know, because it's isopropyl alcohol, I like wiping down my aluminum wire as well, just in case there's any residual on there. And uh, so I'm gonna wipe all these down. I'm gonna take my welding filler material and because I'm into tight areas, I'm not gonna need full length, you know, so that kind of gets in the way. Go ahead and cut it in half. So I'll be able to, uh, to, to dab and manipulate around, you know, very nicely. Now, the other thing is, I'm only going to need maybe 50, 60, 70 amps tops on this. Uh, so I'm going to use my, my light duty uh, MT125. It'll give me 125 amps AC. Now I happen to have a, a, a 9F or flex head torch on it, uh, which fits this perfect. Uh, I'm using today, and I have a choice, I, could, I can go in the 70 amp range, I can go 1 16th, or 332. Uh, you know, I've decided to go ahead and use my 332. And uh, again, I'm, I'm using this laser tungsten because I like to put a lot of hours on it. And it's, uh, it's proven out to be a you know, pretty good product. So uh, anyway, I'm going to get all my gear on and uh, let's weld this thing up. Okay, I'm going to set the machine at about 100 and, 110 amps. It'll be the maximum that even in the starting welding on a fairly cold part, I, I shouldn't exceed that at all. Once I uh, start welding, it'll start dropping down into the 70, 75 amp range. Uh, right here, all I have is a lift or a high frequency start. I hit the high frequency. It's a pretty simple machine. You're either stick welding or you're TIG welding. Uh, this, this button right here is your post flow gas. So I'm going to set it about maybe five seconds post flow. Uh, over here, I've got to decide whether I'm AC or DC. I'm going to go AC welding. Uh, this right here is my balance control. I kind of like it here, and that puts it at about 73% negative. And now I'm at my frequency, and I can go up to, I think, 250 hertz. And I don't really like that high, so I'm going to put it around 120 hertz. And that's really all there is to setting this machine up. Okay, so there's no exact good point to start your welding. So uh, I'm just going to start here because I can weld probably an inch before I get out of position. And then I'm just going to try to rotate all the way around. Now you can go any direction, left, right. You can do it in short segments. But uh, the more continuous that you, you create your weld, the better off you're going to be. So let's, uh, let's see what we can do here.
they when it first started my well, a lot of contaminants down there in the crack, but uh, it, they finally burned away and I, I, I got the metals to join together. It, uh, it, it's kind of porous, but uh, it was weldable, so uh, let me continue. Okay, I'm going to start on the old weld, get a puddle going, and then I'm going to make kind of a, uh, a right-hand turn to catch this other crack. Hey guys, this episode of Take Time is brought to you by Nepotnik Welding Supplies. And I'm in the showroom and I can tell you that they've got all kinds of welding equipment and supplies from all the major brands. They have monthly specials. And if you'd like those monthly specials sent to you in your email, simply click on the link. Now let's get back to welding. Okay, well, I've concluded the welding on here. Uh, it, it actually welded up very nicely. I got to a couple of spots where it just had some paint or something that, that boiled out. And when that happens, just sit there and dwell a little bit longer because there's no way to get it out if it's coming from inside. So uh, let it boil out, cool off, wire brush it off, or take a little grinder and, and get rid of it off the surface and then resume your weld. Because remember, aluminum does not want to wet out naturally. So it's got to have a clean surface to wet to. So you can see that I did wrap rounds here, and of course this thing was cracked significantly on both sides, and initially we looked at it and it was just one side. Um, again, I used 53, 56 filler material. Uh, it seemed to work well, and uh, so we're gonna uh, turn this back over to Paul, and Paul, really appreciate you sending this to us. Uh, these are the types of projects that we're looking at. Now you'll notice that the wells, the original wells on here, Aluminum wells are always a little bit bigger than steel or stainless steel, and not just a little bit, usually a two or three times the size, so it's almost impossible to get a little dinky weld. So thank you for watching TIG Time. I'm Mr. TIG. To stay up with the latest TIG welding technology and education, subscribe by clicking the button below.